Believe it or not, the Oculus Quest 2 is Facebook's fifth VR headset in four years, not counting a million different variations of the Gear VR. But while this headset is definitely Facebook's best yet, there are some areas its older siblings have it beat. So without further ado, let's stack up every Oculus headset ever, except Gear VR, and see what comes out on top. Now tech specs are one of two areas that Quest 2 really comes out on top. On the standalone front, it's more powerful than both the original Oculus Quest and the Oculus Go using the Qualcomm XR2 chipset. That should mean we see better visual fidelity and performance out of the device going forward. But the most immediate change you'll first spot is with the screen resolution. Now to keep things consistent and clear, we are specifically talking about resolution per eye here. Quest 2 has a screen resolution of 1832 by 1920 pixels per eye. Going back to 2016, the original Oculus Rift boasted a resolution of 1080 by 1200. It was decent for the time, but the screen door effect in which you can see lines between the pixels was really prevalent. Now, since then, Facebook's made incremental jumps in screen resolution with each of its headsets. 2018's Oculus Go had 1280 by 1440 per eye, which is the same as we saw in the 2019 refresh, the Oculus Rift S. The Oculus Quest, meanwhile, has a resolution of 1440 by 1600. So it's sharper, yes, but the original Rift and the original Quest both used vibrant OLED displays, which gave you a full range of colors and deeper blacks. Quest 2 joins the Oculus Go and Rift S with an LCD display, so you won't get the same richness in terms of shadows, but you do get the full number of red, green, and blue subpixels, so the sharpness boost is more significant than the raw numbers suggest. Finally, Quest 2 makes the jump to a 90Hz refresh rate over the original Quest 72Hz refresh rate. That brings it in line with more of a PC standard, though you won't actually see that in any games or apps at launch, just in the Oculus Home environment and the Oculus browser. The Oculus Quest 2 is a lighter, smaller and more comfortable device than the original Oculus Quest. It weighs 503 grams compared to the original Quest's 588 grams, and you can really tell the difference once you put it on your face. Though it's also about 30 grams heavier than the original Oculus Go, which uses simplified freed off tracking. The original Oculus Rift was lighter at 470 grams, although obviously it didn't need the technical innards and it had a wire tugging at your head. But there is of course a lot more to comfort than just the weight of a headset. The Quest 2 uses the same kind of soft stretchy strap seen in the original Oculus Go. And that's definitely fairer on the sides and back of your head than what you can see in the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Rift. Ironically though, none of these headset designs come even close to matching my favourite design for an Oculus headset, the Rift S. Why is that ironic? Well, because the Rift S is actually one of the heavier devices in this list. It weighs 561 grams, but it uses a halo strap design which rests on the top of your head with a counterbalance on the back. The great thing about this design is that it allows the headset's visor to rest comfortably on your face without putting too much pressure on it. To this day, it remains easily the most comfortable Oculus headset, though I should also note you can get accessories for Quest 2 like the Elite Strap, which do help the situation considerably. We have a full review for the strap on our YouTube channel and over on UploadVR.com. So let's turn to something we haven't really talked about in much of our Quest 2 coverage yet, and that is the controllers. Now, Oculus controllers have seen quite a few revisions over the past couple of years. For starters, we have the original Oculus Touch, which launched six months after the original Rift in 2016. Before then, you had to make do with an Xbox controller. Now, the bones of this device are seen in almost every Oculus controller since. You have a tracking ring, some face buttons and an analog stick, trigger here and a grip button here. But as you can see, the first Touch's tracking ring was downward so that it could be seen by Oculus tracking sensors. It also just feels really comfortable to hold and really sits into your hand in a firm position. Then we had the Oculus Go controller, which again was only a freed off device. It was nice, it could be held in either hand, it didn't really have an analog stick, it had this tracking pad that you can see right here. But I keep losing it and we don't really need to talk about it. Following that, Facebook switched to inside-out tracking with the Oculus Quest and Oculus Rift S. That meant we went from this to this. So obviously the Quest 2 controller moved the tracking ring up here. It's pretty much still the same design, except it's a lot smaller and your thumbs can actually feel pretty cramped trying to move around in it. Plus, a lot of people had issues with the battery pack slipping off quite easily. Safe to say this wasn't Oculus's finest moment. So going from this to the Quest 2, we introduced the third generation touch controller. Now, as you can see, this is kind of a hybrid of the original two designs. It's got the upwards tracking ring, but it actually switches out the more triangular design you can see here for the original Touch's more circular design. So if you've been eager to see the new design stacked up next to the original controller, well, here it is. Pretty similar, but actually the new controller is a fair bit bigger than the original. I got a tape measure out and I'd say this is about a centimeter wider, actually. So that gives your thumb plenty of space to move, but I would say that maybe this is a little too big. 
So I talk about this a bit in my review, but it's actually harder to wrap your finger around this bigger trigger. Having said that, it's still definitely a step up from the second generation touch controller. So taken purely from what you get in the box, audio is actually one area that Facebook has struggled with since the original Rift. That headset has these really fantastic on-ear headphones that produce crystal clear audio. Since then, Facebook has adopted a near-ear speaker system, which hasn't proved too popular. The speakers are embedded in the straps of the new headsets. It means you can quite easily hear the outside world around you while you're playing, but audio quality has definitely been sacrificed as a result. In fact, some of these headsets, like the Rift S, have this really kind of weak, tinny audio. Quest 2 features the latest and best iteration of that system. The speakers get much closer to your ears than ever before. Having said that, if you're not a fan of this setup, then this still isn't a huge improvement and you're probably gonna want some earphones or headphones to go with it. Quest 2 does have an audio jack, though it's back down to just one jack as opposed to the Quest 1, which has two. So in 2016, Facebook released the original Oculus Rift for $600, then six months later charged another $100 for the Oculus Touch controllers. So it was in effect a $700 headset, and then you needed an expensive PC on top of that. Four years on, the 64 gigabyte model of the Quest 2 cost $300. And it comes with everything you need to jump into standalone VR right out of the box. But then it plays six degrees of freedom content, can access your Oculus Rift and PC VR games, and also uses experimental hand tracking. Yes, other Oculus headsets saw aggressive price cuts over their lifespan, but even then with those factored in, nothing comes close to the Oculus Quest 2 in terms of value. So Quest 2 comes ready to play every game that you could play on the original Oculus Quest. That includes some of VR's greatest hits so far, like Superheart and Beat Saber, as well as brand new games like Population 1, and even exclusive titles like Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge. But running on standalone hardware, those games can't match the visual fidelity and ambitious scope of PC VR titles like Half-Life Alex. But if you do have the PC to run those games, you can actually play them through your Quest 2 with a service called Oculus Link. That requires plugging in a compatible USB cable and then accessing all the same content that you could access on Oculus Rift. Plus, there's even a selection of Oculus Go games available on the headset. When it comes to content, there's nothing out there as versatile as the Oculus Quest 2. So there you have it. The Oculus Quest 2 might not be Facebook's most comfortable headset, and its controllers and audio solution might not match the Rift 1, but starting at $300 with a better screen than any of the devices before it, it quite comfortably takes the crown as the company's best headset yet. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and comment, and we'll see you for more Quest 2 coverage very soon.